Okay, I've been asked uh, to do an experiment I did before using DC and using earth ground as one of the conductors and a copper conductor for uh, the other lead. And let's see if we could get it to work. Well, I could not get any real power through when using DC. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use AC. Now you can see in front of me there's a ground rod there and there's a clamp on it. Now that clamp is going to be hooked to a power source. One side of the line is going to go through a, a normal conductor and one side has to go through ground. And let's see if we can get any usable power through that circuit. Okay, in order to make this thing reasonably meaningful and to get a choice of voltages, what I've done is I've got an isolated power source. This transformer is giving me an isolated power source. If I just use uh, 120 or 240 house voltage, uh, I get all kinds of feedbacks in here. It's coming from everywhere, so it, it doesn't give meaningful results. This is isolated, so it will. And I have a choice of 120, 240, and 440. So I'm going to try all three of these voltages through this system. And you can see my clamp there in the lower right. That's the wire going to the ground rod. And I've got this little wire right here. That's hooked up to the conductor that I have going back to the other ground rod. A uh, little bit over this again. We're using uh, a conductor for one side of the line and we're using ground rods placed into the ground for the other conductor. And they're about uh, between 150 and 200 feet apart. So the ground is a conductor on this, on one side. Uh, I've had a last few days have been rainy, so I've got good wet ground, so this is a good time to do this. I'm gonna hook this up, start this thing first at 120 volts. And we'll go inside and we'll see if I get, if I can operate a load. Remember now this is a 75 VA transformer, so I should be able to run at least a 50 or 60 watt light bulb. Okay, checking where the power goes in. We are running about 0.11 amps. That's at 120 volts. Now we'll check the amperage inside the building where the load is. Okay, here's my setup inside. This is the wire coming from the ground rod. Connected to earth ground. It's, it is connected to one side of this light bulb. The other side of this light bulb is connected to my copper conductor running that 150 to 200 feet. What I want you to note here, now the light's not on, I'm, I'm gonna just, the, the light's loose, so it's not, uh, it's not in a circuit, but I want you to look at the voltage we have. Note we have 118 volts, that's open circuit, I haven't closed the circuit yet. We've got a little amp probe down there, and it's reading, you know, essentially zero. Now I'm going to, Turn down this light bulb to where it becomes a load. Okay, my voltage dropped to about five volts. I do have an amp draw. I have like 1.2 or something amp draw. Let's see if there's any glow at all out of that light bulb. I'll turn off all my other lights. Well, it's a little bit bright out, but I don't see anything in that bulb at all. And I shouldn't. With only 5 volts going through it, it's not going to show anything. So let's go on to 240. Okay, here we're set up 
for 240 volts and we're running about 0.20 amps outside okay now I switched to the 240 volt line you can see we're sitting there at almost 240 volts now I'm gonna to try to turn my light on now if I was getting power through here I would burn out the light let's see what happens okay what we've done is we dropped to 23 volts open circuit was 238 closed circuit 22.8 did not light the light bulb let's uh, turn off the rest of the lighting here and see if there's any little bit of glow at all coming out of that okay if you look closer just a little bit it looks like about 23 volts going through it <laughs> so there's a little bit of power getting through there I'll do an amp draw on this too and we'll see what our amp draw is now we're reading at 23.3 or something and we're reading about two tenths of an amp so I'm actually getting a little bit of amperage through this thing two tenths of an amp it's not enough to light a light bulb but I've had to go to 240 volts to get it let's try 440 and now we're set up for 480 volts and the amperage draw here at the outside is 0.3 amps I've been uh, going along telling you it was 440 all along here and then I looked at the transformer and it is actually 480 but we're getting 473 open circuit voltage now I'm gonna uh, turn on the light bulb and let's see what happens now okay I have actually 47.9 closed circuit voltage and if you look down below I got 0 0.28 0 0.29 amps on the uh, uh, the ammeter and I'll shut the power off or shut the lights off here and you can take a look at that light bulb okay you can see that the light bulb is actually glowing a little bit of course it's 47 volts is all it is remember now take it off I get 472 volts I get about 10 percent of that with the uh, power on okay I'll do some calculations on this and show you what the calculations are for the impedance of that circuit uh, you can see the trend 120 I was getting virtually nothing 240 I actually glowed the light bulb a little bit and at 480 I actually got a little bit of power through it I'm still running less than half an amp as you know it's 0.29 amps so it's not very high and so our resistance is pretty high okay the last thing I wanted to do here is I've set this up again I'm outside where my power source here is uh, and I've hooked this up to the 120 volts that are coming out of the transformer and I've shorted the wire inside if you remember before we always put a light bulb in there so there's some sort of load on it well I just bypassed the load so it's a dead short so now what I want to do is I'm going to turn on the power here and we'll see if it actually does dead short or if it draws you know a small amount of power so let's see what happens okay it looks like at 120 volts it's just about the same as it was before I think I was running uh, 0.1 or 0.11 so uh, it really didn't make any difference if the load was in there or not the uh, there's enough impedance here at 120 volts to keep the amperage draw down to 
that 0.11 or so. Let's try that with 240. Okay, here we have it hooked up for 240, and I'm going to turn on the power. And it looks like maybe just a little more, because I think we ran about 0.2 before. Uh, so dead short on 240, pretty much stayed the same as the uh, uh, in comparison as 120. So let's see what it does at 480. Okay, here we are set up for 480, turning on the power. Now, it's just a little bit more, each one of them just a little bit more than it was with the load on it. So, uh, it appears that the impedance of Earth is reducing the power transmission considerably when we're using these voltages. So remember, we've gone 120, 240, and 480. That's as high as we've gone. I don't think we could run any sort of uh, equipment, lights, drills, anything like that, uh, with this kind of voltage using ground, earth ground, as one of the conductors. Okay, I put a few numbers together on this thing. Uh, before I talk too much about these numbers, it I would never say earth ground is going to be this predictable. Uh, you never know what it's going to do, and it's, it changes daily. It changes sometimes every minute. So uh, these numbers may be representative. They may really not be. But this is what I found. When I had 120 volts, now this is at the load, I dropped from 120, I think it's 118 or something like that, to 5.4 volts times... 1 point or point one two amps I ended up with 0.64 watts now I had available 75 watts at the transformer okay when I went to 240 volts when I went under load 23.1 volts times two tenths of an amp. A little more amperage went through with the higher voltage. So I ended up with 4.62 watts dissipated in the circuit. When we went to 480 volts, we dropped down to 47.8 and 0.29 amps ended up with 13.8 amps. Well, this is not exactly a lineal progression. It didn't double when I went to 240. Uh, so, uh, from 120. So I would think the voltage on this makes a very large difference in whether you can move any power through here. So obviously under 480 volts, I moved more wattage than I did at 120 volts. So, what kind of conclusion can I get from that? Well, if you're using quite high voltage, you probably will get power through the ground. It's not real dependable. Of course, it changes with how wet it is and what kind of soil it is and so on like that. But, uh, the general idea here is the the 13.8 watts compared to the 0.64 watts is giving me a considerable difference in the amount of wattage that goes through this thing with the increased voltage. So I'm thinking if I increase this to 7,000 volts or 10,000 volts, it would probably move a fair amount of power. But for what we do, you know, uh, and we work with uh, the highest voltage work is 480, and the highest voltage we get to ground is only 277. So 
ground is never going to move a lot of power. It's certainly, you know, if there's a short, it's not going to kick circuit protection. There's no way it can do it. It's, there's, there's too much resistance. So I would not depend on ground to move electricity. It can be done. It is done. Uh, there are uh, electrical systems that use it. They're usually rural systems. Uh, but there's problems with that, too. And there's probably quite a few losses uh, using the ground. And I would think it would, you'd have a lot of voltage problems where it would, the voltage would be variable. For our use and for your understanding of how uh, the ground works, the ground is not effective for moving power in the kind of voltages we generally use. When we start talking about ground and neutral, the neutral is the one that brings the power back. The ground does not. The ground really does not do anything like that. It can do some odd things. Now I'll do another one that gives a very high voltage and it really does some odd things then. And one of the interesting parts of this is if you know it and you watch the video, you'll see that I took a, an amp draw out at the uh, transformer and then I took an amp draw inside. Those amp draws were about the same. And yet my voltage had dropped way down like I had high resistance. Because voltage drop is high resistance. Well, that did not appear to happen from what I saw. I think probably what was going on was we were getting uh, either an inductive reaction, reactance or some sort of capacitive reactance. But it, it's so variable. There's no real way to know uh, what it's going to do for sure. So ground is a great thing for absorbing spikes, uh, dissipating lightning. But as a, uh, a conductor for part of an electrical circuit, it is not very good. And the voltage, of course, would have to be very high to make it work anyway. So that's my conclusions on this thing. Uh, if anyone else has any suggestions on it or has any other things that they think would make a difference, a uh, different viewpoint of it, let me know. Make a video of it. See what you come up with. Anyway, that's the uh, using the ground with 120, 240, and 480 volts to see how the ground will transfer power.